actually you did it within one of the social media platforms that is used mostly for business purposes. Uh, normally, um, you know, for people your age, you see most people using Instagram or Facebook, not necessarily LinkedIn. And to my surprise, when I was looking at, you know, all the information that you sent to me, you said, you know, the one that you leveraged the most, it was LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. why don't you talk to us about your success and how you leverage LinkedIn to grow your following? I think that's how I leveraged LinkedIn. I started contacting people. I stopped um, just caring about what other people thought of me. Sure, you may think I added you randomly, you can report me, whatever, right? But that's only such a short like percentage of people. Um, over the amount of time that I've tried this, I realized that most people just one, want more connections and two, they genuinely want to know other people in their space. Raymond Tran is an active entrepreneur. He runs Media Zen Digital, a marketing startup servicing small businesses, personalities, and mid sized corporations with social media management, content creation, and website design. Now, here's your host for the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy V. Terry. So, I guess that is when you started exploring entrepreneurship, because that is not right. when Media Zen was born, right? Right. That is when you started your journey. So tell us about your journey. After attending the conference, I, I went back to my high school class, like, you know, my mind blown and like, wow. Uh, and excited, There's so right? much I can do with this entrepreneurship thing. I'm excited to, to do new things. And um, the next thing that came up in my high school years was this competition called the Make Your Pitch Competition. Um, so basically, you would submit like a two-minute video and they'll select the top 20 finalists out of, you know, hundreds of students to go to uh, Toronto, which is a, pro a provincial competition. So to the U.S. would be a state competition. Mm -hmm. So I'd be invited to, to go to this regional conference and I pitch my idea live in front of real speakers and real investors and, and real judges. Um, so from what there, was your I idea? Just, so I had three ideas. Um, okay. So if you look at my LinkedIn profile, I'm a three-time pitch finalist and, and one-time grand champion. Um, so that meant that uh, I had to come up with quite a few ideas that did like micro startups. So my first one was that I really loved drinking bubble tea. <laughs> bubble tea was like my, my life. I used to drink it every single so day, you know, every single week. I would, yes, those, that drink with the little bubbles. Um, I used to beg my mom to please, please like, let me go buy like a cup of tea. Um, so I was like, you know, like, I have a problem here. I wish I could drink bubble tea every day. And I wish other people, and I see some of my friends, they want bubble tea, but they can't, you know, we're little kids. We can't just, you know, drive out. Right? Um, and I was like, I got an idea. Why don't we just make our own? <laughs> so that's what happened. Uh, three little kids making bubble tea in their high school classroom. And we invited all of our friends and stuff. And people and teachers were coming by and they, they bought bubble tea. And I use that to as an idea to pitch to this state or provincial competition. And that is where, and I was actually selected into the top 20 finalists. And right. that was where I was met uh, with my failure actually, because I would go up there and I remember looking at the judges, they were went from smiling judges to judges that were really serious. And that was something, a life hardship I was not prepared for. And uh, I remember I just froze up. And I didn't know what to say. And I, I had to restart my script. And, and from there, I, I just completely threw the competition. And that was a, a big low in my life because I've never really been embarrassed like that or ashamed. Wow. Like that. Um, so from there, I would do two extra ideas. One called Waypoint, which was a platform that connected high school students with more engaging internship opportunities. And then I failed that one as well. And I remember trying really hard for that one. And then I would move on to my final idea, which would be called Lit Light. Um, it was this really cool lampshade that you cut plastic spoons and then you tape it around a plastic bottle and it creates a really nice light chandelier that you can turn on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just this little kid just coming out with a bunch of ideas. And that last year, and I was like, well, grade 12 already. I was about to graduate. I was like, wow, like I've been selected for the top 20 three times in a row this time before I get up on that stage. And one of the judges was the one that, that stared at me the very first year that I failed, the one that made me freeze up. He's, in, he's sitting there in this row, 
judging me and I'm like wow like what what like my heart is pounding literally right now like the pressure is sweating right on my it's I'm sweating and I'm like wow what if I tried all these three years and, and it was all for nothing and what if I get up there and I freeze just like I did the first year I mean like I practiced so hard I practiced every single day every single hour I, I used to pitch to my brother I would pitch to different audiences I would get up on fake stages and have a fake mic like I've I tried so hard this final year and just to think that I would fail I was like wow I don't know what I do um but I said to myself you know what Raymond the only thing that you need to worry about is not doing your best that's all I need to think about and I said if you get up there and you don't do your best that's when you should be ashamed when you get up there and you give up that's when you should be ashamed so I just thought, you know what, I'm going to go up there. I'm going to do my very best, have absolutely zero regrets, and I'm going to crush it. So when I, <laughs> when I went up there, took a small breather, and I crushed it. That's exactly okay. what happened. I said everything exactly as I wanted to say. And um, the judge that, that frowned at me the first year, he actually smiled this time. He probably didn't even remember me, but he smiled at me in my pitch. Wow. And um, in that year, I was one of the top six winners, and I was called up to – the, to the stage for the grand final and um yeah I was awarded so it was a really great um milestone in my career to be able to fail three times in a row at a state or provincial pitch competition and wow. finally conquer that fear of being rejected um on my final uh, high school year so that's the final thing that happened for media and digital <laughs> yeah. well, I think there's a lot of lessons there that you learned. Um, probably you didn't know it at the time. And I think it's something that probably happens to all of us in life, right? right? That we're going through life and we don't even know that we're learning lessons as we go. And some of them are really harsh, as you said, you know, um, at times you were going through it and you felt like, you know, you were devastated or you were not feeling well about those moments where you were rejected. However, look at you. You never gave up. Um, somewhere along the way, you actually uh, leverage social media for all this, right? right. And um, you were able to tap into this wonderful tool to go from zero followers to a large number of followers. And um, actually you did it within one of the social media platforms that is used mostly for business purposes. Uh, normally, uh, you know, for people your age, you see most people using Instagram or Facebook, not necessarily LinkedIn. And to my surprise, when I was looking at, you know, all the information that you sent to me, you said, you know, the one that you leveraged the most, it was LinkedIn. So mm -hmm. why don't you talk to us about your success and how you leverage LinkedIn to grow your following? Right. Um, so starting out on LinkedIn, I only had about 100 to 200 connections when I did business conferences and stuff. And I remember all of us getting really desperate to connect with everyone, you know, get more connections, get more connections, right? Because the goal at the time was to get the 500 mark, the 500 plus mark on LinkedIn. So you get more credibility and you look like you know a lot of people, right? But mm -hmm. everyone was afraid that if you started adding a lot of people, then they would report you and they would say that you, they wouldn't know you. Um, so I really made the decision at that time. And I'm like, wow, I'm already adding so many random people at conferences that I don't even take the time to know. Why don't I just start adding people, adding random people that I don't even know and then start following up with them, start messaging them or just add them and see what they say, right? And for the first 100 to like 200, like many of them just accepted my, my uh, request, like over 60% of them. Like a good majority of them started accepting my request. Some of them started messaging me like, hey, um, your profile seemed really interesting. Wow. Uh, and then others, and then it'd be like that 1%, like, hey, I, I don't know you. But then you can, what you can respond with is say, hey, you don't know me, but my name is Raymond. I just want to connect with other people across my network. And that's when it got really interesting for me. And I'm like, hey, I can actually scale this and make this, you know, kind of my, my user, my follower base, right? So that's what I did every day. I started connecting with, with many people, countless people. And I started talking to them and people, more people that messaged me, I would reply back and I would form that connection with them, right? And, and that's when I realized that it doesn't matter if people don't know you. Like, that's not what you need to be afraid about. 
Um, I think the main objective is that's what it's all about. Like, sure, you don't know this person, but the idea of social media is that you can know that person and that you can contact that person. You can message them, right? Before social media, we couldn't talk to each other. We had to send letters. We had to, you know, be in physical touch. We had to be in close quarters, right? But with social media, that doesn't exist anymore. And I feel like being afraid of that barrier is something that's going to hold you back from your opportunities, right? I mean, right. the way that you you had me on this podcast and other people on your podcast was by reaching out and messaging people that you particularly didn't know, right? And I think that's how I leveraged LinkedIn. I started contacting people. I stopped um, just caring about what other people thought of me. Sure, you may think I added you randomly. You can report me, whatever, right? But that's only such a short like percentage of people. Um, over the amount of time that I've tried this, I realized that most people just one, want more connections and two, they genuinely want to know other people in their space. And if you have a genuine personality and you're humble about but the way you approach people, then people have no issue replying to you, getting to know you as a professional. So, and, and you touched in a very good point that I usually ask, you know, most of the people that I interview, which is, you know, this famous war of fear, you know, mm-hmm. how about you? Being being afraid is just it's just natural part of things and and it's just it's in us right now. And mm-hmm. when we're afraid of something, we either run away from it or we pursue it. And I think fear has definitely stopped me from a lot of opportunities, but it has also driven me towards new opportunities because having fear of something, you can only conquer that by running towards it. Having fear of not getting my work done will only drive me to finish it faster. And mm-hmm. I think fear can be a good thing and can be a bad thing. And for me, through my journey, fear has just, I've, I've, I've had it as a, it's been a bad thing for me, a lot of my journey. Just be like, well, I'm afraid of me if this happens. If this happens, it's not going to work out and stuff and I feel ashamed and I'm not going to have this and that. But I think having my older brother and having other business mentors and stuff has really encouraged me and really helped me. But you also touched in something really important that I wanted to um, touch on, which is your brother. You have an older brother that apparently has been a mentor to you. Mm -hmm. Um, And at one point in time in your life, he said, um, and I am going to read from here, that your brother said that um, he w- you were not meant to be average. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? How did that help you in your journey? Yeah, uh, I actually remember this, this moment quite clearly. Um, I've been really called like kind of useless, being called for nothing, you know, in my entire life. And I think being growing up in an Asian family, it was all about standards and getting those uh, straight A's and getting great averages. And, that was something my brother did really well. He was a, the golden child of the family. He's always done everything perfectly, and he's always um, been excellent at everything. But um, yeah, so for me, I was you know the B C student. I never I was average at everything, and I was never really particularly great at anything except playing games and and maybe maybe doing anything that I wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember just crying this one night in like my bedroom. And, and I don't know, I just, I was just crying and, and he asked me what was wrong. And I was like, you know, like I'm not meant for anything. And, you know, like mom and dad believe, believes that, you know, I'm not, I'm not that good, you know, and stuff like that. I can't get straight days like you. And my brother told me, it's like, um, you're not actually dumb. Like you're, you're meant to be more than just average. And, and he's like, yeah, mom and dad are just saying that because it grades, but don't worry. Like you like he basically told me that you have a potential and that I believe in you. And for the first time, I actually had someone that affirmed me on the potential that that I had and that it wasn't all about grades. And just from there, then on, I, I started to realize my potential. Now, we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.